All right, Aftershocks TV, we're back with another great episode for you folks. And joining me today is a name many of you will recognize from his days as the guitarist from Legendary Industrial Metal Outfit Ministry. And he's here today to talk about his new band, Siglos. I'd like to welcome to the show two-time Grammy nominee, Mr. Sin Keaton. What's up, Sin? Thanks for coming hey, on Aftershocks. Happening? How are you doing? Thank you for the uh, the kind words. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, let's get right into it, uh, Sin. Siglos, the new band featuring yourself. Uh, and vocalist Pedro Sanchez. You guys got two singles and videos that are out now for everyone to check out. And we'll get to talking about those tracks here in just a minute. But uh, let's, I guess, have you start off uh, by talking about Seaglows in general, how, how this whole you know band came to fruition with you and Pedro. I mean, was this something you had been working on for a while? Is something that just kind of came up recently? Uh, I mean, it kind of it kind of happened. Um sort of by chance um i started writing songs uh during the the you know the shutdown the pandemic um i started writing just a bunch of material and uh, originally i was gonna do um a sort of a solo album with different vocalists on it was the idea behind it uh but i was uh really getting into like some black metal and death metal and, and stuff like that, which, which I hadn't really gotten into before. And um, in doing so, I was really interested in that vocal approach. So I had mentioned that to my uh, engineer producer, Alex Crescioni, and he suggested this guy, Pedro Sanchez, that he had worked with. And so I listened to some of his stuff. I liked it. Uh, I had him come down to the studio he listened to the first song, which turned into the first single, Por Los Siglos. And uh, that was kind of how it started, man. Um, I really liked what he did. Uh, it was uh, initially going to be just one song with him, but I liked it so much that I just said, you know what, I I'd like to turn this into an actual project. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it, it, it got the ball rolling for this. Um, and then we, of course, did the second single, um, you know, Morir Para Vivir, which just came out like a month ago or so. And uh, that's where we're at, man. That's kind of how it started. It was just by, you know, uh, being locked at home for, you know, a, a good mm -hmm. part of a year or so, just writing. And um, we're in the studio. I was actually just there last night, and uh, Pedro's going in there today. Um, we've got about an EP's worth of uh, material right now. Okay. And, um, we're still debating whether we're going to release either an EP or a full length. Um, okay. But that's kind of where we're at right now. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, let's, um, and now the, the word siglos, obviously it's Spanish for the word centuries. Um, so I guess talk about the significance in terms of the name of the band and what it represents for both of you uh, and why you decide to name it that. Um, you know, what's interesting is uh, we didn't have a title, a name for the band. Um, and, uh, you know, until Pedro started working on the lyrics for the first song, Por Los Siglos. Once I read those lyrics, um, I, the word siglos just kind of stuck out to me because it's a word that I had heard my whole life, you know, um, as a kid. It's sort of a, a, a popular saying, um, Por Los Siglos in Spanish. And so that word just kind of stuck out to me. And I thought, wow, you know, that I think I kind of like that to be the uh, the name of the band. I like what it means. You know, I like what it signifies. Um, and so I mentioned that to Pedro, and he loved the idea. And that's kind of how the the name of the band came to be was through the lyrics of our of our first song. So okay, okay, yeah, very cool. Well, let's get into talking about that right now. Let's talk about that first single and video you released for the track Polo Siglos that came out earlier in the year. A uh, real slow tempoed black and doom industrial metal track. I mean, that really kind of sums it up. And I, I know that's pretty much, I, I guess, the best way to describe the band in, in general. Um, yeah. But it really, it really just has an overall, you know, solid blend of those three subgenres. So it's got, I think, a little bit of something in it for every metal fan to enjoy. And like I said, it really does have a really cool video that you guys put out for that as well. So I guess go ahead and talk about the track and what it entails and, and represents for the band. Yeah, I mean, you you pretty much nailed it, man. You know, it was uh, sort of a combination of all those styles or genres, you know. Um, and I wanted to incorporate all those influences into these, uh, into that song in particular, but into all of our songs, really. I mean, you know, I, I definitely come from a uh, industrial, you know, uh, background, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that's sort of a part of my writing. 
Um, and I, I like blending things together. Um, there's a lot of Spanish influence and roots with the songs that we write. So it's kind of, you know, uh, it kind of has a blend of some industrial, like you said, some death, some doom, um, some black metal. Um, and we're bringing in some of our Spanish influences as well, which people will hear in our other songs uh, or other singles that we've got coming up. But um, yeah, that's kind of how that first track came to be. Now, obviously, you guys also just put out your second track as well, uh, and a video for that as well. The song you mentioned before, Maria Para Javier, um, came out a little bit over a month ago. Um, and this one's definitely got more of a straight up, I would say, industrial sort of goth metal feel to it, really in the same you know vein, um, as a lot of the stuff you've done prior. Even you know, even if, yeah. if you like a band like even if you like a band like a Fear Factory or something, it has that kind of vibe to it. Uh, it's also you know, like I said, it also has a really great video that for that song as well. It's got those ritualistic images and scenery in it, which are really cool. Um, and I did also realize, I saw that it was also um, directed by your ex-bandmate there from Society One, Matt Zane. So yep. I guess talk about that single and, and what that uh, how, how that came about as well. Yeah, that you know, the second song, Morid Para Vivi, definitely more of an up-tempo, straight-up metal kind of, you know, uh, thrashing, barn burner, you know, track. Um, it, it definitely, I wanted to ramp it up from the first one. The first one is, you know, definitely slower, uh, has more of a mood uh, to it. So I wanted to show the other side of what we do as well. Um, but uh, I thought, you know, Matt Zane did a, an amazing job directing it. Um, he definitely captured what I was going for. You know, I wanted it to be sort of a performance video. I wanted to sort of showcase and show the band a little more uh, performance-wise. And what was really cool about that video is that we actually had a shaman from Mexico come in. Oh, wow. Um, like, yeah, that's like not an actor. That guy's a real shaman. Oh, really? Yeah, like the real deal. And he actually performed uh, cleansing, if you will. Um, and we were able to capture that on video. Um, so that was a pretty cool, you know, thing to experience for all of us that were there uh, that day at the video shoot. But uh, that's like a real thing. It wasn't an actor. Um, he's like a real shaman from Mexico. Oh, wow. uh, speaks very like lim limited English, um, mm -hmm. you know. But luckily, uh, uh, Pedro and I are uh, fluent in Spanish, so um, it was pretty amazing having that and and being a witness to that. You know, experiencing that. Um, something I never thought I would be a, a part of, but uh, it was pretty cool. And I thought it added a definitely a cool element and it goes along with the, the lyrics that Pedro wrote for, you know, for that track. I agree to that. Well, yeah. And speaking the you know, of, of, you know, uh, the Spanish language, I mean, one of the more, I think, unconventional approaches, you know, to the band and the song titles and the lyrics is that they are all in Spanish. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know off the top of my head, I mean, there's only really a few bands that I know of really here in the, you know, based out of the U.S. that do that. I know, you know, Dino Cazares has a few bands. He does, you know, Assassino and uh, he's had Brujeria over the years. Um, yep. So in a sense, I mean, this signifies to me that, you know, you guys are not so much really worried or concerned about really the, I guess, the mass appeal of this band. I mean, you and Pedro are obviously more, I think, artistically invested in representing, you know, really your Latin heritage and culture. Yes. I would, I would think more than anything on this project. So, I mean, was it an easy or even a difficult decision for you both to really take that unconventional route, especially considering that, you know, you're based here in the States and obviously a lot of, sometimes people just hear it and they might not really try to grab onto it. But I mean, was this yeah. something that you guys from day one, were going to go full ball with no matter what? Well, you know, it's a very good question. Um, when Pedro and I first started working together, when, when I first, you know, told him, you know, uh, that I had this one song that I wanted him to put some vocals on, one of the first things he asked me was, oh, he's like, do you want me to sing in English or Spanish? I honestly hadn't even thought about that yet. And um, when he mentioned it, I immediately just said Spanish. I was like, yeah, I mean, I to me, it just seemed like, a different cool element to add to this um you know that's the way i looked at it i wasn't really looking at it like oh you know it's gonna it might limit our appeal or it might no nah. i was like you know what i i feel strongly about this i love the fact that that it's in spanish um you know with this heavy intense ex- extreme metal so it was a f- is easy decision for me pedro agreed and uh, you know we uh, we feel very strongly about that. Um, but what's interesting is um, I have had a, a couple of um, uh, radio stations um, not wanting to play the track because it's in Spanish. Is that- and um, you know, and I, I mean, I understand to a certain uh, extent, you know. But honestly, I, I, it, that's not going to stop us from from you know doing it in Spanish. And and we might actually do something in English at some point. You know, I don't, I definitely don't want to limit the band um, in any way. Um, another aspect of it was uh, that people have been asking me about is us wearing makeup, you know, in the videos and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just felt right for those songs, for those videos, the next, you know, uh, video we do, we might not be in makeup. Like, I don't, I don't want to be pigeonholed, you know, uh, mm-hmm. in any way. Um, obviously it's a, it's a heavy band, you know, we, everyone knows that just from, uh, you know, listening to us, but I want us to be able to grow. Um, I, I don't want us to just be, you know, labeled, you know, not that we are, but I don't want us to just be labeled. Oh, they're, another black metal band or another doom metal band or another industrial mm-hmm. metal band. I want to mix a bunch of things together and I want the band to constantly be growing. So, um, you know, it, I, to me, the Spanish thing is it, that's where we're at right now. That's what we feel we're feeling right now. Um, and uh, if we decide to do something in English, you know, we will. Why not? Sure.
absolutely. Well, I mean, anybody that really follows, I think, metal very closely, but they know, for one, metal is an extremely popular genre in the Latin community. I mean, not just here, obviously, very. in North America, but South and Central America, it's 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 huge. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, we, you know, yeah. I, I've done, I've gone down to uh, Brazil, you know, with ministry. We did Rock and Rio. Mm -hmm. um, we, I've done Argentina, Chile, uh, obviously Mexico, and it is huge down there, man. I mean, oh, yeah. huge in South mm -hmm. America. Uh, the, the fans down in Brazil, the fans in Chile really were just, it was one of those scenes, um, you know, like, uh, from Hard Day's Night from the Beatles where they're running, you know, down the streets yeah. being chased <laughs> by fans. Like it was wow. literally like that for us, man. Yeah. It's crazy down there. So, you know, I like that, um, that, that, uh, we're sort of, um, you know, uh, we're doing this in Spanish and hopefully, uh, you know, opening doors for other, you know, Spanish uh, um, metal bands out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, you know, when it comes to, you know, I guess, you know, targetings, I guess, if you want to use that word, uh, potential fans, you know, in terms of demographics, I know that's more of a business type of thing. But I mean, is the focus of the band to focus really to hone in and target and promote it within really the Latin community, the Latino metal community, or is it? your intention is sort of maybe try and open the minds and ears of your average Western metal fan in general, hopes yes. that they'll embrace it. Like, you know, a lot of people embrace like a band like Rammstein, right? They don't sing English, but they're huge. Exactly. And, they, and they've been able to do that. Okay. It's funny that you mentioned Rammstein because that's the band that I mentioned to these uh, radio people when, you know, okay. they were saying, oh, you know, we'd love to play it, but it's not in English. And I'm like, Rammstein. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, so, but I, but I understand, you know, I get it. Um, but yeah, it's more so um, of, uh, you know, it's not that we're targeting uh, the Latin community. It, we just, we, we want to open more doors, if that makes any sense, you know, and, and expose it more to the, you know, the Western ears. Um, to me, I mean, music is just, it's, it's such a universal thing. It doesn't matter what language it is. I'll listen to stuff that, you know, uh, I might not know the lyrics. I might not understand them, but it doesn't matter to me if it touches me. Um, you know, that's the beauty of music, man. So those borders don't really exist for me. Um, you know, so it's more of, of, of us just trying to um, spread what we do, you know, everywhere. Um, we're really, we're hoping to get over to Europe at some point, you know, maybe next year or so, okay. uh, some of the European festivals or something like that. Um, you know, because I just think that there's, I think people would really be open to this and really dig it. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what language it is, you know, Rammstein's a very, uh, it's a perfect example of that. Yeah, no, and I agree. I, I think, I think fans will, I mean, once they hear this, I really think they're going to open their mind because this is it's really some great stuff you know and, and i gotta ask you, you know considering the fact too you know uh sin that in your previous bands in ministry and society one obviously both al and matt were the faces of those previous bands i would have to think now for you now with siglos this has got to feel i mean in a way I, I would think artistically liberating that you could pretty much now do what you want to do i mean this is your baby this is your creation yeah um and as a guy who's very well respected amongst your musical peers from your previous work, considering that you're also a two-time Grammy-nominated performer, I guess it's got to be, in a way, sort of, a, in a lot of ways, a sigh of relief to now have your own thing where, yeah, you don't have to really follow anyone's particular lead. So, I mean, as a seasoned guitarist and musician, I mean, how liberating really is it for you now to have something that you can have, you know, full control of and really call your own? Very, very much so. It's very liberating, very freeing. Um, you know, uh, certain pressures are, are off. Um, uh you know, and it, it's it's just, I don't know, man. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if it's just because I've been doing this for so long now. Um, and, and I loved, you know, uh, being in those my previous bands. Don't get me wrong. It was great. Uh, it was great contributing and, and doing, you know, playing my part in them. But it's kind of cool now to uh, write a song and know that it's, it's going to end up exactly the way I envisioned it in mm -hmm. my in my head you know what i mean so yeah. stuff like that is always it's it's it always feels good um and luckily pedro and i you know have a very very good writing partnership um he handles all of the the lyrics and and the vocals and, and stuff like that i do all the music um and it's just been going great right now you know and it just feels really nice that, that we're able to bounce ideas off of each other um when we're in the studio which is also a great thing you know um the reason I was hesitant in the past, uh, you know, during the pandemic and when I was writing songs, you know, just on my own, I, I really hated uh, thinking or saying that I was going to release a solo album. 
just because I've always had a problem with with that, and that's just my own hang up. Um, because I, you know, and it may not be so, but it always sounds to me like it's an ego thing. You know, like, hey, I'm doing a solo record. It, that it, that's where my mind goes, and and uh, I hate that it does that sometimes. You know, because that's not the case with with everyone. But I, I always feel like you know, oh man, people are gonna think that you know I'm some fucking dude with this huge <laughs> ego that like you know what i mean like and that's not the mean, case yeah. at all yeah that's not the case at all like i always mm -hmm. love being in a band and i always love you know having the other guys you know with me and everyone contributing and stuff like that so um you know it, with this it feels really good man and and yeah you're 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 absolutely right it's very liberating and freeing um to sort of know that at the end of the day i mean you know pedro and i are the ones that are going to be saying you know yes or no to things. Um, so it feels great. You know, it, it feels really good right now. Sure. Absolutely. Now with, with the songwriting, you know, I mean, how differently do you, are you approaching your song right now from the, what you've done in previous bands? I mean, obviously the bands, you know, the band overall has a, a, a bit of, you know, obviously a different sound from those previous bands, but do you approach it from a similar angle, you know, that you did previously, or is this sort of like a new start for you in terms of songwriting? Uh, you know, both, man, a little of both. I okay. think that when you're a writer, um, there are just certain things and certain characteristics that just come out when it's you. And that's kind of how mm -hmm. people recognize you, your writing, your playing and stuff like that, right? But like, say, uh, I'll give you an example, like when I would, you know, when I was in ministry and, you know, I'd get the call from Al to, you know, hey, we're, it's a, it, we're gonna write a new record or, or, you know, whatever. My first question was always like, okay, what's the direction? Or, you know, mm -hmm. what, wh where do you wanna go with it? And so I would try to tailor my writing in that way. Um, to whereas right now, I'm just writing to write, like whatever okay. pops into my head, I'm just writing, I'm recording it, you know, at home, I have a, like a home studio recorded at home. And then I worry about placing it elsewhere, because I have like a ton of other stuff that, you know, it, it might not end up for Seaglos, might end up for another project that I have, or, you know, or something else. So I just kind of shelve things right now. But, you know, it's just right now, writing to write without having to think, okay, you know, I've got to go in this direction. It's got to go in this angle. You know, um, I need something in this tempo, which is like something that Al and I would always joke around about, you know, we'd always, uh, he'd always say, okay, well, you know, we need like a, a fast, you know, barn burner for this one. So I mm -hmm. write something accordingly. Right. And then he'd be like, okay, well, you know, we need a slow one. So I do that. And then there was always the inevitable, okay, we need like a mid chunker, kind of track and so i would write something like that you know what i mean mm, yeah. um but now it's like i i don't have those things there you know um so that again it it just it feels really it feels really good right now man and it, and it takes me back to the very early days of uh playing and of writing where you were just writing you know, because you felt something or you had an idea and it just came out, you know, you weren't worrying about, okay, it has to fit into this. Or it has to go into there, um, which those things do happen, you know, when you're, you know, in a band, like it was like in ministry or, you know, or a situation like that. So it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool right now. And, and, it, and everything feels like it's uh, going smoothly and coming out, you know, a lot more effortlessly. Sure. Well, and, and just just to, you know, we touched on it before, you know, and, and just going back to the songwriting, I mean, as you mentioned, there's going to be, you know, um, with the EP or their album, whatever comes out, you're going to have a whole bunch of sort of different, um, I guess, you know, st riff styles or whatever it is yeah. you're going to incorporate into the music. Um, <clears throat> now, now, having, I guess, just that freedom, does that also, do you worry sometimes like, well, maybe, um, you know, maybe I should, you know, I'm putting something there that might not work or, you know, cause obviously, you know, with ministry, you, you know, you knew exactly what kind of, if yeah. it to kind of be in, does sure. it, does it make you a little bit, I don't say worrisome, but are you concerned that maybe you're going to overexert yourself and go to different territories that, you know, people aren't used to you doing or. Um, yeah, I do have those thoughts. Absolutely. I had, I actually had those thoughts last night when I was in the studio okay. <laughs> um, with, uh, with my producer and, and, you know, I was actually telling him, I was like, man, hold me back on this because I'm starting to go off in a, a whole different realm here. <laughs> and so I was like, reel me in, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, I, you know, those thoughts do pop into my mind, but then, 
you know, like I was saying earlier, because I want the band to constantly be growing, I don't want to keep us in that box. Mm -hmm. So if that means, you know, me taking a risk, um, you know, then that's what it is. You know, as long as at the end of the day in my gut, I feel it's right for the song mm -hmm. and I feel strongly about it, then, then it's all good. Sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. So Sid, I mean, you know, these days too, you know, we're seeing and hearing uh, really a resurgence, a lot of the similar, you know, sounds and styles that we heard back in the nineties. And obviously industrial metal really was, I think at its peak back in the nineties, early two thousands, mm -hmm. especially in Los Angeles, you know, no doubt. Yep. Uh, about a year or so ago, I spoke with uh, Amir Durak from Orgy and Julia yeah. K. And I um, mean, he was saying that, you know, we, we kind of talked about the same thing. He was saying that, you know, in his, from what he senses and what he sees, there is a sort of a, a resurgence in, in the industrial metal, industrial rock, uh, you know, um, genre. Um, and he said it was sort of making a comeback, you know, especially within the L.A. area. Yeah. Um, obviously, like we've said, you know, Rammstein's still going strong. Uh, Nine Inch Nails is out there going, doing their mm -hmm. thing. Fear Factory, you know, even without Burton, they're continuing on. So, yep. I mean, from, from what you can make out or sense as a guy who's been playing the style, you know, for so many years, what do you see or sense that's going on with the Dutch Mill? Do you share that same sort of observation as Amir does in that regard? Yeah, I, I, I think I do, man. Um, okay. I try to keep, uh, you know, my ear to the street as much as I can nowadays. But I do see kind of a lot of like these sort of industrial bands, you know, coming back, either coming back or popping up which is uh, a cool thing, you know. Um, I think music, it, it comes in cycles, you know, and it just, like, things uh, are always constantly just like this, man. Mm -hmm, you know, sure. in, in yeah. the uh, my entire career, I've seen that. So I think it's a cool thing, man. I, I, I like seeing older bands that are sort of coming back, and I like seeing these kind of newer bands that, you know, are, are incorporating this industrial-ish uh, style to them. But um, funny thing about Amir is that the first time I saw Amir was back in 82, maybe, oh, wow. when he was in a band called Rough Cut. Rough Cut, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was <laughs> yeah. the first time I, I, I saw Amir back in the day. I was like, I don't know, 13 or 14 or something like that. But yeah, I know he's out with, uh, or he's going out with Julian K, I believe, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, uh, yes. yeah, one of our, the, the drummer, um, a uh, good friend of mine, Galen, uh, is playing drums for them. Who played drums in uh, the Last Lords of Acid tour that I did. Oh, okay, very yeah. cool. Nice, nice, excellent. Yeah, yeah good, fantastic. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Julie K. Yeah, very good man. I agree. Yeah. Um. So, Sid, man, now that you've 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 released two solid singles, you got the videos out there. I guess the next question, and you've already you know talked about it a little bit, is what's next for the band. I mean, I know, like you said, you, you you're looking at either an EP or an album. Um, are you going to release maybe a, a single or two more, you know, before that? Are you going to play some shows maybe locally? What's sort of the plan right now for Seaglos? Well, right now, like I said, we're, we are actually in the studio. I'm not in the studio right now. I was in there last night. Pedro's in there today. Um, we're going to figure out if we're going to release maybe one more, maybe do one more video. Um, and then that'll be it. And then we'll wait um, to either release the EP or the album. Um, I'd like to get this done before the end of the year. So either of the two, either EP or album before the end of the year. And then what we're doing is um, I've been talking to some uh, agents out in Europe about possibly taking the, the band out there, you know, next summer. Mm -hmm. So summer of 2023, hopefully to do some shows out in Europe, hopefully to get on some of those big festivals. Um, but that's sort of the plan. If, if, uh, if, the right gig or the right tour comes up in the States before that, then we'll take a look at it. But I honestly, you know, um, I want to take, I want to make sure that it's the right thing for us. I don't just want to hop on anything. Um, I've gotten a ton of offers to do things and shows and, and things like that, but I want it to be kind of a special thing because it's, it's to me, it's a, it's a, uh, a special uh, band and I want to make our debut something memorable, you know, not just like a, uh, some whatever one-off, you know, somewhere sure. just for the sake of playing. Um, mm. So we want to wait for the right thing, but that's kind of the game plan right now. All right. Well, fantastic. Well, once again, the band is Seaglos. You can check out the videos and singles for their first two singles, Polo Seaglos and Maria Paravia. 
Uh, so go ahead and let our viewers and listeners know where they can keep up with you guys and check out the new tracks and all that good stuff. Yeah, I mean, the the, the best place is on our band camp. Um, you know, you can see this, uh, hear the singles there. Uh, there's our YouTube channel as well, so you can actually watch the videos. And, and uh, our lyrics are actually posted there on the uh, YouTube pages as well. Um, I know there's a social media page uh, as well. Um, that you can follow us on. But the best thing is either Bandcamp or YouTube um, where you can see and hear everything. Okay, fantastic. Well, there it is once again, Seaglos. If you're, uh, go check it out. If you like Sin's previous work, there's no doubt you're going to really dig uh, this project. Absolutely. And Sin, thanks so much for coming to Aftershocks. Look forward to hearing uh, more music from the upcoming record, man. Hey, man. Thank you very much for having me. I, I appreciate the support. Um, really means a lot that you have me on. Um, sorry, I was a little bit a few minutes late, um, <laughs> but uh, we appreciate it and a huge, you know, thanks and uh, uh, to you and to everyone, all your listeners and to all the, the friends and fans all over the world that continue to support me it means a lot. And uh, you know, hopefully, we'll, we'll see you out on the road at some point soon.